pulp magazines, science fiction to western to mystery. They sold for only a few cents, but they were worth a fortune in entertainment value. Gaudy, garish, lurid, but often well written. Tonight, George Blumenson, a pulp writer from the 40s, shares with us his observations about this unique publishing phenomenon. And back by popular demand, presenting more of their hilariously eccentric, unbridled comedy sketches, the High Wire Radio Choir. Tonight, don't miss the Turlock Carpet Sweeper Massacre and the Three-Headed Comic. Now fans, tonight's movie was supposed to be Curse of the Fly, but the print got swatted. So now the radio choir will present a condensed version called Curse of the Fly Trap. Our movie, The Terror, starring Boris Karloff and Jack Nicholson, this is a Roger Corman film we're offering in place of the movie listed in your TV guide, Curse of the Fly. So fans, put away your swatters and trade in your flit guns. You won't need them after all as I, John Stanley, the invincible host of Channel 2, bring you yet another startling, sanity-crunching edition of Creature Features. Again, by popular demand, I've been going out into the public to meet all of you Creature Features viewers. You all see turkeys on this show almost every week, but how would you like to have a turkey right in your own home? To carve up with a butcher knife, to cut the ribbons so you can release all your pent-up frustrations. Yes, all you gobblers, just write to me in care of tarnished turkeys, and you might win a turkey for Thanksgiving. A Norbest tender-timed basted young turkey, perfectly seasoned Mrs. Cubison's dressing mix and cornbread stuffing mix. That's it, stuffing. Well, it's time to tell you a little about tonight's mummified guests. Two Egyptian queens, male or female, really wrapped up in their work, here to insist that we all rush out to see The Awakening, now at Bay Area Theaters. This is a modern day version of Bram Stoker's Jewel of Seven Stars in which Charlton Heston unearthed the crypt of an evil princess and a curse with it. It's the omen of the Egyptology set with many grisly murders. Now in this sequence, Susanna York is in a lot of trouble. Do something for me, quickly before I change my mind. I'm frightened. There's a spare key to my safe, taped under the middle drawer in the bedroom. Take it and smash the Kenobi jars.
Awakening. You don't want to miss that. Now, another movie I want to tell you about called Fade to Black, which stars Linda Carriage, a unique Marilyn Monroe look-alike. The film is about a young man who assumes the roles of various movie monsters and characters to get even with the bad guys. And it's one of the best films of its kind. Now, Linda autographed this photograph personally to me the other day, but unfortunately she couldn't stay in town long enough to do creature features. But she wanted me to tell all you fans that she loves each and every one of you, and she hopes to see more of you in the future, and she hopes that you see more of her in Fade to Black. And you certainly will in the current issue of Playboy, where Linda bears it all, if you know what I mean. Right now, let's take a look, close-up look at Linda in this scene from Fade to Black. Don't worry. No, what? Better not. Okay, look. No more advice. As of this minute, <laughs> you're on your own. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Amazing. You look exactly like Matt. We know, we know. Everybody says that. What was the name of the movie that Tom Yule took you to see in Seven Year Itch? I forgot. Is it famous? It's a horror movie. Give you a clue. He was green and slimy. Frankenstein. <laughs> the werewolf. Now you're just guessing. Who the hell cares? It was a creature from the Black Lagoon. Stupid. Hey, how did you know that? It's great. Do a lot of movies. It's my thing. Thrilling. I love movies. Well, mummies, I want to thank you for uh, coming by tonight to tell us about the Awakening. I know the fans aren't going to miss that one. It's a good Class A Charlton Heston horror film. Right now, though, we've got to get back to the terror. And after the terror, stick around because you're going to meet the High Wire Radio Choir. Well, I think you'll want to stick around. This is a hulking thing from another world that 600 quivering creature features fans saw last Friday, Halloween night, during a midnight screening of Filmways without warning at the Grand Lake Theater in Oakland. On the stage, we presented the artistic endeavors of three Bay Area artists who have done renderings from the new science fiction horror film. First. John Harrington of San Mateo and his life-size liquid latex mask of the extraterrestrial life form who comes to our planet to stock Earthlings for his trophy room. Many hours of hard work here, richly rewarded by this remarkable likeness. 
Next, this oil painting, Hungry for Humans, painted by the talented Sandy Blaylock of San Mateo. You first met Sandy on Creature Features just a few weeks ago. Anybody out there looking for a good matte painter? And finally, Dan Berenger of San Jose, who here shows us his rendering of the spaceship in which the alien might have come to Earth. Many hours of meticulous work. John Harrington, Sandy Blaylock, Dan Berenger. Creature Features salute you for your fine work in the field of science fiction art. And now a warning to everyone listening to my voice. Tell the world. Tell this to everyone wherever they are. Watch the skies. Watch everywhere. Keep looking. Yes, watch the skies for soon it will strike without warning. Yes, it's time once again for Just Plain Tom, the TV drama that asks the question, can a real life turkey find happiness with a Saturday night turkey without losing its head? Yes, all you turkey lovers, you can win a Norbest tender time-basted young turkey seasoned with cuddly Mrs. Cubison's mix and cornbread stuffing mix. Yes, fans, win your turkey and stuff it, if you can. Now quick. Write to me in care of Tarnished Turkeys here at Channel 2 at number 1 Jack London Square and you might win one of 15 free turkeys we're giving away just before the Thanksgiving holiday. And if time permits, we'll be announcing some of the winners on next week's show. Well fans, a few weeks ago I promised you that the Boogeyman would be here on Creature Features in the month of November and I'm now going to live up to my promise. Now here he is in the inhuman flesh the Boogeyman. The most terrifying nightmare of childhood returns. The Boogeyman. <coughs> the Boogeyman. He's going to get you. And you. And you. Me. Had its own power. The Boogeyman. You can't hide from him. By the time they believe in him, it'll be too late. The Boogeyman, he's going to get you. Well, tonight's movie is a real classic, Theater of Blood. It's a masterpiece of black comedy. It was made in 1972 in England, and it stars Vincent Price as a Shakespearean actor who's been panned by all of the critics in London, so he decides to get his revenge, and one by one, using plot devices from the works of William Shakespeare, he knocks off those mean old critics. I wonder if the critics at the San Francisco Chronicle know what's in for them if they continue to pan such movies as Terror Train, Boogeyman, and all of those other current horror knife psycho murder thrillers. Hmm, I wonder. Anyway, Theater of Death is an ingenious 
idea, cleverly executed, and it's full of twists and turns. I know you're really going to enjoy it. This is one of the finest films we've had this year. Join me a little bit later because I'm going to be presenting to you a special retrospective on the career of Vincent Price. And then later tonight, by popular demand, another picto shock. <laughs> Preparing the second annual Outrageous Beauty Review and the more outrageous Costume Ball, a tacky orgy of bad taste which offends even jaded snobs. Tonight, you'll learn all about the tacky details. The What makes a woman interesting is that inside she is many women. To know her is to never stop discovering her. It is what makes all women beautiful. I feel the same about perfume. If it is exquisitely made, you never stop discovering it. It is constantly exciting to wear. Like the woman who inspired it, Sophia by Cote. At Liberty House, we've got the gift for you. Tonight we pay homage to one of the great motion pictures and its fascinating producer. For our subject tonight is this fabulous new book, David O. Selznick's Hollywood, written as a labor of love by film historian Ronald Haver. Haver has brought with him rare Selznick film footage tonight, and he's going to tell us how he came to write this unique book. Our movie. Roger Corman's X, The Man with the X-Ray Eyes, starring Ray Moland as a research scientist delving into the secrets of the universe who sees to the very heart of pure knowledge. It's a low-budget American international effort you'll see right through yourself. For this is the program that brings you the spectrum of cinema. From highbrow to lowbrow, from the artistic to the pretentious, 
that one step beyond common sense called creature features. My producer stopped me in the hallway just before the show tonight and said, John, you've just been devoting too much time to blood and gore on your show. You never have any time for the nicer things in life, in life like the hearts and flowers that your female audience might enjoy. And I thought about it and I decided, well, with February, you know, already here, maybe I could solve that problem by wishing you all a very special kind of Valentine's Day. And this is my wish to all of you out there. It also happens to be the title of a new Paramount picture that I'm going to be holding a special screening for about in mid-February. And you still have time to receive your tickets by simply writing to me in care of Vile Valentine, number one Jack London Square, Oakland, 94607. You must send a self-addressed stamped envelope if you want your invitation for two, though. And I'll be there to greet you fans and have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with you. Now this is a film about a killer who goes around in a miner's suit and he cuts out the hearts of his victims. Later this evening, I'm going to tell you about the new David Cronenberg Canadian film called Scanners. We have some scenes from that. And I'll be telling you how you can win some free tickets to, to see that film also uh, around the late February, early March when it opens up. About tonight's movie. Now the producer-director is Roger Corman and he's never pretended to be anything more than a commercial exploiter of cinema. Yet his contributions are so numerous, the sheer weight of his output alone has earmarked him for the mini hall of movie fame. In the 1950s, when the B-movie was dying, Corman revived it, and in the process gave birth to American International Pictures. The content of his films, mostly science fiction, horror, and other common genres have always carried an energy that compensated for their low budgets and hasty production techniques. In recent years, Corman has graduated to handling his own production distribution company, New World Pictures, and he's brought us everything from Ingmar Bergman to the recent Shogun Assassin, a film that other studios were afraid to touch because of its excessive violence. Corman is daring, innovative, unbound by the traditions that often hamstring and mire the studios in cinematic red tape. He's contributed to the careers of such filmmakers as Monty Hellman, Francis Ford Coppola, Dennis Sanders, Curtis Harrington, and Peter Bogdanovich. And hence, he's probably given us more to our enjoyment of the cinema than we might first give him credit for. Tonight's movie's not the best example of his work, but it's an example of how you can produce quickly and efficiently and make a product that can still win an award and make money at the box office, and after all, that's what that business of movies is all about, and that is ultimately what Roger Corman is all about. Well, I'll be back in about 20 minutes for our special conversation about David O. Selznick, and we have some footage of King Kong for you, also Four Feathers, an adventure film made in the late 20s. But right now, you're going to have to excuse me because I must be gone with the wind. <laughs> 